Hello everyone, this is Johannes and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And today we are taking a look at Rajas of the Ganges from Inca and Marcus Brand, a Euro game that came out at Essen Spiel 2017. A game I was really looking forward to play and now I have played it and that's why I'm making this video to tell you about this game. Let's see how you play Rajas of the Ganges. Rajas of the Ganges is a worker placement game, so you're gonna take your workers, you're gonna place them and do some actions, like you do in most worker placement games. But this game also uses dice, and some of the actions you take with your worker will need to discard dice. Some actions need dice of specific color, some actions need dice with a specific pip number, and some actions just want you to discard dice, uh, a die and get rid of it, and some actions will give you more dice, so you can use them for for your actions. So let's just for first talk about the point of this game because most games are about getting the most points and while that is also important in this game that's not actually the point of the game. There isn't six rounds and then the person with the most points is the winner. The point of this game is to be the player who gets their point marker here to cross with their money marker here. So you have to balance your income, the money you get, the money you use, while also getting points. After that has happened, everyone else is gonna get one more turn, placing one more action, one more worker, and then if more players have made it happen, that they have reached each other, then the person who have them farthest apart from each other is the winner of the game. But how do you play this game? You play it by placing workers and doing actions, as I of course already said, but that isn't really helpful. So let's go through the different aspects of this game. The game is a lot revolving about around these dice, getting the dice, using the dice in the, in the right way and the right time. So let's first go all the way down here and talk about these really simple actions that get you dice. These actions here just give you an orange die, these give you a, a green die, these give you a blue die, and these give you a purple die. And when you get the die, let's say I put my worker down here, I take the orange die, I just roll it, and I put it down here. And this tile here is just there to see how many dice you can have. And you can have 10 dice at the same time in this game. So those eight actions are that. Then you can exchange some dice. So you can go over here, exchange a... Uh, um, Orange die for two purple dice, roll them and put them down here. So those are pretty simple as well. And over here you can go to get two money and to re-roll as many dice as you want. Let's say, oh, I have two twos. I only want one two and I don't need a three. I'm going to re-roll it. Oh, I have a lot of purple. Now I have 18 in purple. Three sixes. That is good. I can tell you soon why it's good. Thumbs up to get three of these. And that are those actions. One thing, there's not so many actions in this game, so we're just going to go through all of them. Over here you can build buildings. Buildings are a really big part of this game. And the further faster the, the, the before you go in the round doing uh, buildings, you will pay less money. So the first player going will pay one, and it's one, two, two, three, 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 four. So the more buildings built in one round will get more and more expensive. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna pay one money, and then we're gonna go over here to all these building tiles because uh, the building tiles do have a little bit of different information on them. You have the die number, you have some roads, and you have a building. Uh, um, some some uh, tiles do not have buildings, they have only trading posts, and some buildings or some tiles have both buildings and trading posts. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Let's say I want to buy this tile. It has a building and it has a trading post. And also in the upper corner here you can see there's a purple die with 9 on it. So I have to pay with dice, purple dice with at least the number 9. So these are 12, I will throw this away and I know I'm the pro downer of this tile. And I can now put it out here in my on my personal player board. And the way this works is that I want to put them out so that the um, the roads always lead back to my palace. The roads doesn't have to lead anywhere. You can put roads um, in or off the board. You can put roads into other tiles. They just have to go one way or the other back to the palace. And if I put a building like this and it goes out to one of the um, uh, one 
of the um, yield tiles is what they're called the yield so let's say I do this you will see I will get three money so I would maybe do that I will get three money boom 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 and then also I will score the building and in the beginning of the game you can see here all the four buildings and everybody has their marker here which says two points so when I get this out I will get two points and I will move my marker two points other times uh, or later in the game I can upgrade my building so that I can get more points every time I score one of those buildings that's basically what happens when you build the next thing you can do is to go to the market you have two uh, different kind of spaces you have specialized places over here let's say I, I have bought this uh, I can go here I have to throw away a random, not a random, but a, a die of my choice. Let's say I throw away this one, because if I throw away a one, I can now get income from one place that sells this cloth. And I only have one, so I throw away a one and I will get all the money that says three money. So later in the game, of course, I can maybe have four or five or even six of one type. I can go there, throw away a, a die and get a lot of income. The other two spaces here are basically a free space you can go there for free and you will score one of each of the three different commodities so you will get let's say i have a three a two and a three that's eight money i will just get that you cannot go to both places so if you're playing a three or four player game you can only go to one of these spaces the last space down here is the river and you can go there to move your boat up the river and over here you have to throw away a 1, a 2 or a 3. So let's say this is a 1, a 2, let's say this is a 2. I can throw away the 2 and then I can move my boat 1 to 2 free spaces. If there was another boat, let's say here, I could go 1, 2 or you can just do skip the spaces where there are another player's colored boat. So let's say I want to go here for example, then I will just get 2 die on dice of my choice and add them to my place i'm not going to go through all these different ones it's going to be really simple if you if you if you if you buy the game or if you see this run through this uh, this uh, video you will basically understand most of them if you see the board and uh, they're just bonuses that will help you further in the game the last place you can go is over here there are six spaces and all of them depends on a, a specific die uh, a pip pip number on your die so let's say i go here i can throw away a two i will then get two uh, dice of my choice and i will get one of these yields oh this gave me three money and i get three money well let's see what happened here i unlocked another worker because three places on the board on the money track one on the uh, point track and one on the river track you can unlock a worker but you can only have a maximum of five workers so when you have five let's say i unlock the money one and i rush up here and unlock the the river one then this one just get removed from the game uh, yeah, and that was also unlocking a worker besides doing this action. This action does not have anything to do with unlocking a worker, it just happened to happen. The first one, you will uh, throw away one, you will be the first player the next round, and you will get two points. The third one is another uh, mechanic I haven't explained yet, so let's do that. You will get two karma, and you will also get a random or a die of your choice. Karma can be used to flip over dice, and that is the only way to mitigate dice uh, uh, luck of the roll in this game. So I can use uh, Karma to turn this 5 into a 2, for example, if I want to go here and do a number 2 action. So that is how you use Karma. Number 4 here is that you can upgrade a building, so let's say I want to upgrade this one. Every time I score this building, I will now get 3 points, and then I will get 3 more money. The fifth one here is you can upgrade a, a, a tile. So let's say I have this tile here and then I, I see like, oh, I would want to upgrade it. So I have to then upgrade it to a tile that is better. That means this is a nine. That means I can upgrade it to a 10, for example. Uh, 10 is the, the largest building. So a nine can only be upgraded to a 10. And I only have to pay what comes between. So I only have to have a blue one for example i can throw that away and i can upgrade this and put this over if i would want to do that you do not score yields again so i couldn't do it like this and get three more money but if you want to open up have some more opportunities each tile can only be upgraded once so when you have upgraded the tile one time you cannot do it again and the sixth place is you you throw away a six and you move six spaces on the 
uh, river and you get the bonus that is there. That is a way to rush up to get this, for example, or if there's something you want higher up to, to fuel your strategy. And those are basically the things that you can do. So most of this game is just trying to maximize the way you get the buildings, getting points, getting income, uh, balancing it and stuff like that. Before we go up and see what I think about it, I want to mention that there is an, a variant of this game, uh, which is a little bit more um, um, involved. Uh, advanced variant where uh, the couple of differences. You're going to turn around your board and you're going to turn around your dice board so you can only have eight dice at the same time. And in this variant, you can also unlock all your workers so you can have six workers uh, at max. So you can also unlock the river worker and also. Uh, it's, it's a special yield. So instead of these yields over here that you pick one and you just get it, you're going to take all the yields of the different colors and put them face up here. Also, when you, if you see on the board, you can see that there are different colored yields. You're going to start with a brown one. You're going to pick a brown one at, at random and place it out. Those are basically ways to score so you can make a more uh, strategy going for one in particular thing to try to get more points or a lot of money later in the game and also every time you get a yield you're gonna have to take it you will not get it immediately and you will put it on your board so you can upgrade the spaces that are there already of the same color and then when you connect it you will get that special yield um, <clears throat> And that's basically the the the, the add-ons. It, it makes the game uh, more interesting and a little bit more to think about. Also, there are a couple of more things. There are some bonus spaces on the uh, coin track and also on the point track that you will get when you land on them. For example, upgrading a building, getting some dice, moving on the river and stuff like that. And that is basically how you play Rogers of the Ganges. So let's get it back up to the table and see what I think about this game. And that is how you play Rogers of the Ganges. A uh, pretty simple medium light worker placement dice managing game. Something like that. Uh, I really like this game. I have so much fun playing this game. It's so quick. It plays with four new players in an hour 15 minutes. It plays with two players in like 40 minutes and it works really great with all player counts. I love it at two and I love it at four. It's so great. It's, um, yeah, let's just start at the beginning. Let's start with the components. Let's do that. The components for this game are okay. The components are, when you look at it, you'll, you, you will understand this is going to be a Euro game. This is like, my, my friend saw it the first time he was going to play it and was like, mm, this looks like a classic Euro game and that's basically what it is. You, you see, you get what you see. This is a game where you will see it and you will, you will instantly know if this is something you will enjoy or not. If you see this and you think like, nah, this isn't for me, maybe it won't be, but I think you should check it out because it is different enough from a lot of other worker placement or Euro games. But this game really looks like the Euro game that it is. But the art is good. It's it's not mind blowing, but it, it's it's good art. I enjoy it. It's clear. The iconography iconography is is clear. Everything is is easy to understand. Everything is clearly laid out. The rules are simple. Everything is 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 made so that this game will be easy to play. Also for players who don't enjoy heavier games, who doesn't play that many games. This is going to be an easy game to get into, an easy game to understand. So, gameplay, as I said, I really enjoy it. One thing I really like about this game is uh, I was really uh, looking forward to checking out and seeing how would this um, work with the two things going at the, the, the points and the money going to cross each other. How would this feel? Would it feel like something else than just getting most points or getting to the end of the point track? And it actually does. It makes this game feel like a race. It really, really feel like you have to optimize your actions, like you have to really try to do the best every turn. And you would also do that in all of the games, but you have to manage, I can't just use money all the time because then I, I'm gonna have to get so many points and you're not gonna get so many points so easy in this game. It's easy to get uh, some money and a lot of points or to get to, to, to balance it out or to try to get a heavy money strategy and just 
also get some points. And uh, there's feeling it feels like there's different ways going on how you play this game. And I have felt that the game is different enough every time, but I'm not sure like how much replayability it is. It, it is uh, all still fun. Uh, I think it's going to be fun for like 10, 12 plays, and then it doesn't really matter because most gamers, especially like me, we don't play games that many times. If you want a game that you can play 50 times, I'm not sure how good this will be after 50 plays, but then again, I don't know. That's just speculations. And But I think the replayability is pretty high with this one because you have different dice, you have different players, you have different buildings coming out, you will go for different strategies, will you go for a heavy building strategy, especially when playing the... Uh, variant where you have the other side of the board and you will start with different brown special yield tiles that will give you maybe more of a way to where you want to go what strategy you want to go for and that will also make the game interesting and different every time you play it and everything is fun this game is fun and as i said i i'm not usually into racing games but this feels like a worker placement racing game because it really feels like a race and also one thing that makes it feel so much like a race is that the actions go very quick like you have an uh, overarching strategy or you have some things you want to do but every decision is really quite simple there's not so many things you can do so it's a simple decision do i want to go here do i want to go here like i usually know when it's my turn i want to build this building and put it out and if i can do that then the turns are going really 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 quick it goes super fast and and that makes it even more feel like this racing thing and i really enjoy the feel of this game i enjoy there's nothing i don't really enjoy there's one when you play the basic version the number two spot here when you get two dice of your choice and a yield tile that feels a little bit um, i don't want to say overpowered but it feels really powerful like if the first player had a number a two die they would go here and that usually also happens when you play the uh, advanced version but it's not so powerful because you just get to upgrade it and but it's it, it, it is a really powerful uh, place and also the going six on the river we haven't used that too much because you want to try to, to go steadily up the river so that you can actually get a lot of the things maybe towards the end of the game if you want to rush up and go to all the market stalls so because at the end of the river there's a lot of market stalls you can get a lot of money maybe for that we have not upgraded so many uh, buildings because usually you just want to build a new building instead of upgrading it of course upgrading is cheaper but you have to have a five to do that so i'm not so sure about that uh, but the number two, number three, and number four are really powerful actions that we use a lot. We have not used the number one so much, uh, just a couple of times uh, playing with three or four. Of course, almost never with two players because then the first player token is just passed. The first player elephant is just passed to, uh, back and forth to the players. Uh, but it's easy two points. But um, it feels balanced. It feels like a tight race. The buildings are nice. The tiles with the buildings, I mean, so I'm just calling them buildings. They are nice. Um, cool dice. Everything works really, really well. I enjoy this game uh, immensely. It's uh, quick. It's light. It's really good. I enjoy and recommend Rajas of the Ganges. And that is the end of another video from me. Thank you so much for watching Board Gaming Ramblings. I'm so happy that you're watching, that you're commenting, that you're interacting with me. It makes me happy. It makes me feel great. And you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please like it. And I will talk to you on the next video. And this was the end of this video. Bye and bye.